So my name is Ndola Prata, and I'm going to talk to you about adolescent reproductive health, decreasing risk, and optimizing prospects. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, please meet Nayol. Nayol is a 24-year-old girl, a young woman from Sub-Saharan Africa, and she sells fish in the market and going door to door. She has four children. She's the third child of six, all of them boys. She went to school up to fourth grade because she had to give space for her parents to be able to afford to send the boys to school. She was married at 15. She was the second wife to a 37-year-old merchant. And at that time, she knew absolutely nothing about sexual and reproductive health. Her first child was born at 16. And currently, after four children, and at the age of 24, she does not want to have any more children and has very little access and uh, knowledge to know what to do. Just very quickly, her reproductive history. The first pregnancy, not the firstborn child, the first pregnancy was a miscarriage. In the second pregnancy, she, had, she developed preeclampsia. In the fourth pregnancy, she had postpartum hemorrhage. It took her a long time to recover, and she wasn't able to care for her children and for herself. Now, currently, at 24, when I met Nayol, she was taken to the hospital in an emergency. She was bleeding. She was diagnosed and treated for, treat for incomplete abortion. And in the course of her assessment and evaluation and treatment, we discovered she was HIV positive. So this is Nayol. Nayol's situation in Sub-Saharan Africa is not uncommon. Now, why focus on Sub-Saharan Africa within Innovations for Youth? Well, first of all, I am from there. I was one. Um, an adolescent, and I could have been Nayol if I did not have the opportunity. So the second part, this is more personal, but the second part that is important to know that we focus, we would like to focus on Sub-Saharan Africa, because according to the UN Population Division, prospects to projections of population by 2050. It is from Sub-Saharan Africa where most of the population growth of the world will come from. So it is also in Sub-Saharan Africa where 30 to 34 percent of the population is currently 10 to 25 years old. The progression to secondary school by girls is less than 50 percent in most of the countries. And the out-of-school adolescents vary significantly from 39% in Ethiopia to 78% in Niger. Adolescent childbearing is also a tremendous contributing to current fertility with significant impacts on morbidity and mortality. It is also in Sub-Saharan Africa where Young women, adolescents and young adults that are sexually active know the least about the use of modern contraception. And even though there are uh, differences between countries, it's still considered quite low, um, a little bit higher among uh, 20 to 24, but extremely low among 15 to, to 19 year olds. It is also in Sub-Saharan Africa where, and this is just an example of a few countries, where the legal age at marriage is still in adolescence, and range, adolescence range, and, and, uh, and is sort of a below the adult age limit of these same countries, which is 18 years old. So with all that in mind, at the Bixby Center, we focus and, and we guide ourselves looking at um, this 
an uh, analytical framework when we design our projects. So Coco mentioned a lot of the, sorry, underlying um, social determinants. So, so those are some of the underlying causes. Um, we also look at some of the drivers of unsafe, uh, unsafe sexual practices. Um, the reproductive complications in terms of outcomes and the consequences that can happen to all of this um, at individual level, at the household, and also community implications. Not forgetting that the adolescents' offsprings are also the ones that have the highest neonatal infant and child mortality. So in sum, Reproductive health knowledge, behavior, and opportunities in the second decade can determine prospects in adulthood. And it is, and continues to be, will continue to be, an important motivation for the Bixby Center's commitment to this subpopulation. Just to give you some specific examples of areas where we are currently focusing. Um, we're focusing, for example, in uh, northern Nigeria, looking at program and investing in girls that um, has safe spaces, so in school and out of school programs through safe spaces to reduce child marriage and also um, basically address early childbearing and poor birth spacing, even among those who marry at 17 and 18. Another example in the case of Ethiopia, we're looking at health systems bottlenecks to address issues of lack of contraceptive use um, that can lead to unintended pregnancy, early childbearing, but also poor birth spacing, and some of the important outcomes, reproductive health outcomes related to unsafe abortion and other obstetric complications, such as the ones that um, Nayol had when she was um, an adolescent herself. So, and we contribute this through identifying gaps in knowledge, developing and testing new solutions to improve some of these outcomes, synthesize current knowledge for policy decision making, and also designing processes to move from evidence to policies and practice. So, what, as you can see, um, we don't address currently all of the areas that we believe can affect um, the reproductive health outcomes of adolescents and young adults. Um, but we would like to do that. And we think that um, innovations for youth at UC Berkeley will allow us for a faster, stronger, collaborative work to address this multidisciplinary nature of the issues facing adolescents and the complexities that some of these interventions may require, just to name a few new methodological approaches, different principles for behavioral economics, you know, just to name a few. But the way we want to work is not just as a group of researchers, um, and I'm using what um, our dean has mentioned, um, with a common goal. We actually want to build teams and what it means is that members of these teams coordinate these activities. And the teams include many other stakeholders beyond researchers, including youth themselves. So going back to um, Niall, we want to, at the end of the day, decrease risk and optimize prospects. And ideally, we want to reduce the number of young people that will end up like Niall by addressing some of the changes that we require to, uh, to achieve that. In the case of Sub-Saharan Africa, where I do most of my work, we do need some very bold initiatives that can be delivered on a very large scale, but they are urgently needed. And I think that the UC Berkeley innovations for youth can provide a platform, and together we can work on designing a blueprint for adolescent health. And going back to what Coco was saying, we can actually answer some of the critical questions related to when, where, and with which messages we can intervene to gain improvements in health outcomes of this very important population. 
Thank you very much.